Hey, what's up, folks? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And today I want to discuss a question that is among the most common questions that I get, and that's who buys web hosting? Is it you or is it your client? How do you manage it? How do you hand it off? In fact, I just sent out a WordPress survey to my email subscribers, and this was one of the questions that was asked. It was a good reminder to make this video. Ultimately, my belief is that this is not something that really matters that much, but it's one of the things that holds people up because they don't have a set answer, and there really is no one right answer. I've done this pretty much every way possible, and we're going to review the options, but I will say that today my preference is to manage everything from my own accounts. Let's dig into the options and the pros and the cons of each. So option number one is that your client purchases their own hosting plan. Now the advantage to this is that it's distributed. They have full control. If they wanna do something themselves like add an email address or a forwarder, they can do that without your intervention. Now this ultimately comes down to whether or not they're a tech person and they wanna take control of this stuff because most of my clients don't. I work with the home service industry and they are allergic to computers for the most part. If you're dealing with more of a nine to five office type of client, they're gonna be a little more likely to wanna learn this stuff and willing to do it themselves. Now the downside of this is that your client might forget to renew. I've had this happen, and in fact, I think I just talked about this on my last video, but a client forgot to renew because it's under their control. I didn't get any emails. All the reminder emails went to them, and they missed them. Their website went down, and they thought something went wrong. They thought it was hacked, and all I had to do was log into their account and check that the bill was overdue. And once I updated their credit card information because it had expired, they were up and running within a few minutes. And they were also extremely thankful that I took immediate action with this problem. So if your client is not that tech savvy, it's probably better for you to take control of this. Not only can they potentially mess something up on the back end if they don't know what they're doing, but it's also a missed opportunity for recurring revenue. You know, they're going to end up paying 10, 20, 30 up to maybe 50 bucks for a hosting account, depending on what service they use. It's better if you make that money as opposed to them paying it directly to the web hosting company. And you can obviously charge more for that management if you include other services. So this is what I like to do. I pretty much never do a website unless I'm managing it 100% under my account nowadays. And the only real exception to this is if the client has already purchased a web hosting account that they were using before and they don't want to switch over. In that case, I will just ask them for their login information and do it myself. But most of the time, they are okay with switching over if they did this a while ago and they just want you to take care of everything for them. Now, option number two is that you can create a new hosting plan for every website you create. This could be a single account single site account, excuse me, because most hosting companies, they offer a plan for one website and one domain, or they have a plan for unlimited websites, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Now, the advantage to this is that it's still decentralized, even though you're controlling the accounts, you can also spread those accounts to multiple hosting companies if you'd like to diversify even more, and also just to test other hosting companies to see how they operate. You'll see the commonalities between all hosting companies and maybe some specific features that one company offers, which another one doesn't. And while I do have recommendations for hosting companies, I'll link them up in the description below, and we'll talk about that at the end. Ultimately, this is not a life or death decision, and a lot of people treat it like that, where they think that if you're on a, a budget hosting company, you have a horrible website set up. I don't believe that to be true at all. You can get by with cheap hosting, especially if it's a low traffic website. If you do have a higher traffic website, that's where you might want to upgrade to something like managed WordPress, which is more expensive. I switched over my blog, WebsiteProfitCourse.com, to managed WordPress hosting. For this reason, I just wanted to separate it from my client websites. And on top of that, they're going to be a little bit better with WordPress-specific support. Whereas if you go to a web hosting company, that hosts all types of websites and not just WordPress, they generally leave any WordPress questions that you might have on you to figure out because the bottom line is with WordPress, a lot of the problems that arise are because of the themes and the plugins that you use and not the web hosting technology. The last option, which this is what I do now, I have an unlimited website package hosted with SiteGround. I was using HostGator for many years, almost a decade, I have a longer story as to why I switched. Part of it was just to use another company along with getting that introductory deal because on HostGator, I was on a VPS, which wasn't necessary. I did it years ago and there was a reason why I switched over to that. 
but I realized it wasn't necessary. So I was going to get billed for a crazy amount. I think it was like $1,500 or $2,000. And most of my client websites are low traffic local websites. So I decided to switch over to SiteGround. And now I'm on a SiteGround unlimited hosting plan. It makes it super easy to manage everything from one account. And SiteGround is like a perfect middle ground between budget hosting, which that's really what HostGator is. If you want affordable hosting, HostGator is the way to go, in my opinion. I've dealt with a few other budget hosting companies, and I've had the least amount of issues with HostGator. And then you have the middle option, SiteGround, which is kind of like a step above HostGator, but a step below fully managed WordPress hosting, which that usually costs somewhere between $25 to $50 a month. And most of the time, they don't offer the same type of introductory deals that a company like SiteGround or HostGator do. The obvious upside is that you're going to be managing everything from one account, all your websites, all your hosting, all your email accounts. The downside is that if there is an issue with the hosting, it could affect all your sites. So if there's some downtime, something happens, all your sites might be down simultaneously. And I have had that happen once or twice over the course of you know about 15 years of managing websites. And like I just mentioned... I moved my blog over to manage WordPress hosting because I did have a couple spikes in traffic that I believe were slowing down my client websites. You know, that happens because my blog gets traffic worldwide, whereas my client websites, they pretty much only get traffic from a handful of towns in my local community. The other benefit to having an unlimited website hosting plan is that you're going to standardize your setup process. When you use one account and one company, it's a lot easier to roll through all the steps you need to do to set up a website and get better and better at that as you set up new websites. And then on top of that, if you do have any issues, it's going to be a lot easier to solve future issues with the same company as opposed to trying to figure out how one issue translates to a different hosting company. So I hope this video was helpful. Like I mentioned, check out the description below for my hosting recommendations. The two that I recommend are HostGator, if you want the most affordable hosting package, especially if you just want to set up one website and get online. You can check them out from WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash HostGator. Or if you'd like to check out the added WordPress features that SiteGround offers, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash SiteGround. Once again, those links will be in the description below. And if you're a WordPress user or a web designer who wants to start earning from their skills, Check out my cheat sheet, 15 tools to start your web design business. You can download that from my homepage, WebsiteProfitCourse.com. You might want to browse my blog as well. I got a lot of helpful content on there, both for freelancing and WordPress tutorials. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know how you handle this scenario with website hosting. If you have any issues or unique circumstances that have come up from this, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all future WordPress tutorials and freelancing videos like this one. I truly appreciate you making it to the end of this video. And if you'd like to keep on learning, I'll link up a few related videos right here. Thank you and have a great day.